It is time to do a stream. Oh, let me just get this up. And by this, I need something else. Okay. I know you can't see yet. You will soon. Oh, let me stop that. Close this. That like that. What we got for history time today? Well, we have got the first crusades. <laughs> rabble, 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 rabble. And uh, this will be an interesting one. I'm going to try and remember all the names because there are so many important names that happen here. And uh, yes, I know Roger is pronounced Roger. Roger de Hauteville. Um, so the First Crusades are pretty pivotal, right? When, when we think of the Crusades, we think of Richard the Lionhearted, which I think was the Third Crusades and the Fourth, or just the Third. Someone can help me out with that. Um, we think of all these pivotal characters of European history, and we think of probably one of the most important stages of the medi of medieval times in the Crusades. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do the, the Spark Notes version. We're not gonna go through every single situation. I'm trying to keep this at around 20 minutes or so. So um, the interesting thing about the Crusades is that it, it it's kind of um, started truly by the Byzantines. And what I mean by that is, um, at the time of the Crusades, which, so right now we're looking at the map at 1066, the Crusades started at 1096, so about 30 years after this point. And from this, around this region here, the Seljuk Turks had expanded their empire and created a great caliphate, right? And the Celtic Turks, Turks pushed over to the west here, and they smashed into the Byzantine Empire, and they took a lot of this, or almost all of Anatolia, straight up to Constantinople. And Alexios Amnemnos, uh, he's right over here. Um, Amenos, Amnemnos, like right around here. His dad is at least. <laughs> mm, going well. Come Nennos, thank you. Come Nennos. Um, Alexios was the same emperor that um, was pushing against Beaumont of uh, uh, Robert Giscard's son in Greece, over here on the far west. And the interesting thing is that uh, Alexios he he has this very um, interesting title because he usurped the throne from this guy right here. Constantinos. And what essentially happens is the Seljuk Turks control all of Anatolia. And uh, Alexios, Emperor Alexios, reaches out to Pope Urban II, the, the Pope at the time, and says, hey, I need help. We're going to get overrun by uh, uh, Islam, by, by um, uh, infidels, as it were. And you have to remember, at this time, too, the map was kind of... I, I can actually divide this by. This will help out a lot. Oh, religion. The map was pretty well divided. Um, you had Orthodox Christianity that was now fully on the rise in Eastern Europe, and it was still over here in Greece. And Catholicism, or Christendom as it were, was pretty much making up this whole portion of Western Europe. But Islam had made a huge... Um, stamp into the majority of Spain. The Reconquista wouldn't start until 1200 AD, and you had a huge, almost this entire portion of land was Muslim. So, for Pope Urban II, this was a huge opportunity. This was a, a chance for him to push back against the growing uh, surge of Islam forces, or Islamic forces. It was also a chance to heal the divide that was created from the um, the Great Schism between Catholic and Orthodox Church. And in addition to that, too, uh, the Pope had a hard time controlling Christendom. All of the feudal lords, all the bishops, they kind of ran things on their own terms for the most part. So Pope Urban II was like, um, 
let's start a crusade and it's important here because the crusade wasn't just hey if you go help out then you'll make money you'll you'll get honor you'll get fame and fortune it, it wasn't about that the most important thing about the crusade was penance uh, i had a history teacher that taught me that every single major thing in history can be can be uh, brought back to three if uh, all three if not one of three things it's the three g's of history god gold and glory it's usually one of the three or all of the three or two or three two of the three and from that here we have god glory and gold all of them being pushed into one simple motivation for jerusalem the holy land and at the council of claremont uh basically uh, pope Urban ii said hey he galvanized nobles and other members of the clergy and said listen whoever goes over there uh does not go for gold and fortune although that's what they did um they go for penance anyone who does it in any shape way shape or form either militarily or otherwise will earn penance in the name of god and what happened with this is that it galvanized not just the nobility and the knights and the military of christendom it galvanized the populace so the very first true actual crusade is not the first crusade that goes to war with jerusalem it's actually the people's crusade and the people's crusade was led by peter the hermit I'll look at my note. Yeah, Peter the Hermit, who was essentially a, a French priest. And he just rabble roused everyone. And from France, they traveled to the east into Germany. And it started actually a pretty huge little situation where they were. Um, it was a, a, a large anti Semitic movement. And they were killing and torturing tons of Jews throughout uh, prominent German cities before moving all the way down here into hungary going over uh, the danube all the way down into the byzantine empire and uh, uh emperor alexios was like yeah, yeah just 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 get them get them across i want no part of them and they actually were butchered like to a man right over here in nicaea just about so pretty much right after the time that they went over uh, uh from constantinople they were killed so the people's crusade is the first actual crusade and it was butchered for the most part because it was not a military engage a military force it was not disciplined it was for the most part civilians um people from all walks of life going on this really crazy situation here now the second crusade the actual real crusade that is what we know as the first crusade is the prince's crusade and this involves many prominent princes of christendom so you've got people like godfrey and baldwin um two individuals from france you have uh, what's his name? Hugh Vermandois, who is from Vermandois over here. Um, and interesting thing about this in the game, Vermandois is the last of the Carling line dynasty in Crusader Kings 3. But even though this is... Um, sorry, I was looking over at chat. Even though, I'm sorry, not Herbert, Hugh. This is Herbert. Hugh of Vermandois. Hugh of Vermandois is actually of the uh, Sapet line. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Um... So he's uh, actually related to the king of France. So these individuals, uh, Archbishop uh, Adam Adamar, and then you've got two individuals from Norman Sicily going. Bowman and his cousin, or is it cousin or his brother? Uh, nephew, Tancred. Tancred. So Bowman, or Robert Giscard's son, Bowman, who died in my campaign. Um, Capet. It's Capet. Okay, thank you, Crisps. Um all these forces meet up depart through this little uh it's actually a pretty good little i think this is an, intended to be an, an actual uh trade route um and depart off of italy walk go through the byzantine empire and they march up to constantinople and this is a crusader army that is massive 40 to 50 thousand soldiers with some seven to ten thousand knights that's a huge proportion of knights to normal soldiers and then something like a 70 to 100 thousand just normal people these are just non-combatants that are uh, going alongside with the crusade and as they reach constantinople um emperor alexios was was floored he in his mind he was expecting a mercenary band from christendom like maybe a thousand five thousand soldiers nothing crazy instead he gets the largest um 
massive army of Christendom that he's seen in quite some time, aside from fighting, of course, a uh, lovely bowman over here. And he gets worried. He thinks like, you know, okay, we've lost Anatolia and I want to reconquer Anatolia because this is the Byzantine Empire. He doesn't want to just throw this land away to the Crusader army. So he makes them all swear fealty to him and promise that any land that they take, they will return back to the Byzantine Empire and to Emperor Alexios. Baldwin of Boulogne is correct. Baldwin and Godfrey. Uh, Baldwin is the, is the brother of Godfrey of Bouillon. Um, so they all swear fealty and they finally get ushered across and ferried um, into Anatolia. And this is where it all begins. So you have to consider some things when you're taking a look at Western European knights in Anatolia and what will eventually become Jerusalem. You have heavy armored chainmail knights um, in arid desert hills, um, all sorts of different um, um, environments that they're not necessarily used to. So it took some adapting, and a lot of that kind of came down to the fact that the Seljuk Turks at the time were fast attack, they were constantly harassing, they had men on, uh, they had archers on horseback, stuff that wasn't very common in Western Europe. So it did create a little bit of, um, uh, uh, I guess, like a, an initial hurdle. But Nicaea was quickly taken over by the um, Crusaders. But as the last stroke, before they were actually able to take the city over themselves, the Byzantine troops marched in and took the city, actually kind of rustling some feathers with the Crusaders because they wanted the spoils of war. But instead, they got in there and the Byzantines had made a deal with the, the, the Seljuk Turks that took over Nicaea and said, hey, hey, let us in. You guys can leave and you won't get killed by the Crusaders. So when the Crusaders march up to the gates, and lo and behold, it's all Byzantines. They were kind of pissed off. So as the Crusaders kind of traverse down to this portion of the map, they have their first actual engagement at the Battle of Dorylaeum. And here you have um, Bowman, which is the which is the vanguard, and Godfrey, which is the rear guard. Uh, Bowman's force is caught out. By some Seljuk Turks, and they hold the line just in time for Godfrey to sweep around and completely smash out the wings of the Seljuk Turks army with a massive cavalry charge. At the same time, too, the Seljuk Turks weren't sure if more forces were coming, so they um, are called mail, not chainmail. You're, you're, you are totally, you are correct. Um, I'm just trying to say chainmail as a point of reference so people easily understand what I'm talking about. Um, so they didn't know if more people were coming. The Seljuk Turks flee, and as a result, the Crusaders have won their first actual engagement, even though they did take some good losses in that first fight uh, for uh, Bowman's forces. Now, as they kind of progress down this direction, um, the I believe it's the Armenians over here in the time uh, summon someone over to Odessa. And Bowman goes over to Odessa and liberates Odessa and becomes the first, it establishes the first Christian duchy in the Holy Land with the Duchy of Edessa. Soon after that, we have Antioch, which is taken over by Baldwin, or wait a minute, I'm sorry. Baldwin takes Edessa, Bowman takes Antioch, and that's why he becomes Bowman of Antioch. Or maybe it's Tancred of Antioch. I can never fucking remember now. See, I told you the names would play with my brain over here. Baldwin, Bowen, Bowman, they're, they're too similar. But Essentially, Antioch is important, too, because it creates the principality of Antioch. And um, what's important, too, about this is that this was a very long and protracted siege. It took a long time for them to actually take out Antioch. They got a little bit of reinforcements here from Byzantine-controlled Cyprus, and there was actually relief in the form of another Crusader army joining in from, uh, from sea. And eventually, once they took Antioch, they found the Spear of Divinity, and that helped to galvanize the uh, uh, Crusaders once more and fought another overwhelming force and won because of that, gal that, that being galvanized and being um, empowered by, you know, the Deus Volt brother, that kind of action that happens with the whole Crusades uh, moniker. And with the taking of Antioch and Edessa, you have a solidified Christian state now in the Holy Land. And what eventually happens is, um, this is an interesting point of contention here because the Byzantine Empire was going to support Antioch, but 
they had gotten false reports that the Crusader armies were completely destroyed. So they were they feared that their army was going to get overrun by Seljuk Turks, and they immediately fled back to Constantinople. And this pissed off the Crusaders at Antioch. And this is what allowed them to create the Principality of Antioch because they said, well, you didn't honor our side, your side by coming to our aid and giving us assistance, so we're not going to honor our side by paying fealty and giving you Antioch. So what happens is this is what allows them to solidify this without the Byzantine Empire going and smashing them out. And as they move southward, they, ascent, they essentially take over Jerusalem um, away from the Fatimid Empire, which was the Egyptians at the time. And that is, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, the First Crusades. I left out a lot of details here and now, there, but I wanted to give you guys a really good idea of how it traversed from this portion of the map all the way over across here through Byzantium, over through Constantinople, down across Edessa, Antioch, into Jerusalem, and you have what is, I think it's 400, 500 total years of Christian rule in uh, Jerusalem. That is our history lesson for the day. Uh, Rinmar, I am just into history. Just a minute. Yeah, uh, Chris made a good point. Uh, the way that the Western cavalry fought was different from the Eastern cavalry. And although both sides had he uh, heavy cavalry options, the Western cavalry was very different in a way it, it uh, met in combat. But the way they fought with them was largely unfamiliar, though infantry plays a larger role in the Crusader warfare than people gave it credit. Also very true. And then Orlando Bloom's wife uh, commits suicide, and Orlando Bloom decides, I too need to uh, go through some penance. And then Orlando Bloom takes the road south where the, until the men speak Italian, and then goes a little bit further, and then he's there in the Holy Land. And that's the, the premise of Kingdom of Heaven. There we go. <laughs> so let's go back to the main menu. Let's load up our campaign. I started playing Abyssinia, and it's been a lot of fun. It's really challenging, but a lot of fun. King Roger de Hauteville. That was about 20 minutes. It absolutely 100% is. All right, guys, we got 230, 220 of you guys in here today, but only 53 likes. Bros, I need you to turn it blue. Press that like button. It helps me out a ton. It helps out any content or a creator that you watch. If you like their content, if you like what they're putting up, press that like button because it's telling Google's algorithm that the video that you're watching is indeed good content and it matches the title. Please push this out to more viewers. So please, please, please do press that like button. It helps me a ton. So we're going to be playing Crusader Kings 3 yet again today. And I will be doing a giveaway for a key of Crusader Kings 3 at the end of this uh, uh, little showing here. There's always a dickhead who dislikes. It's fine. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like Crisps. He's like, you know, Chris, Crisps would be like, would message me afterward and be like, hey, it was a good stream, but I just don't want you to get ahead of yourself. So I, I disliked it. <laughs> okay, so... Um, in our last episode, we took over this little duchy here, um, Arachian, and from it, you just give me the key now, though. <laughs> Stefan, you wish, brother. Um, from it, we have to usurp a title. We can usurp the duchy of Arachian, and I'm excited to do it. What is this? What is this? What, what count? Why is that not in mine? But we'll, we'll figure that out in a sec. We need to... Usurp this title. It's going to cost 250 Um, 
We need to ask for gold. Mary, do you have any money? You are on death's door, Mary. Look at you. So we're going to ask our head of state for gold. Crisp just showed me that he's 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 got a like on it. Did I? <laughs> it's probably turn. That'd be that'd be really funny. <coughs> um. Okay. So we're gonna ask our head of faith for gold because we need more money to make to usurp that claim. He'll lose twenty opinion to me. Come on, Stephanos. Don't be that guy. It's it's gonna cost me, and I do really want to do a holy order, but I don't want that duchy. Can declare some wars though. We don't want to do those now. Powerful vassals, yes, yes, yes. So I don't think that we'll grant this to anyone. We'll take a look as we get closer to stuff. Low control in counties, yeah, we got a lot of low control. Um. It's going to take 46 years. We'll switch you back over to taxes. And actually, I might increase control elsewhere. What are, this will take two years, seven months, 15 months. Palermo has got really good control. And it's one of my domains. So it would make a lot of sense for me to do such things. Syracuse is at 12. Palermo is at 19. Get it to 20. We are also over our... Why does that say nine of one? Maybe it's supposed to be see maybe it's supposed to be nine of ten. Ah, there we go. There we go. Alright, um, nine of six. You, you were right. Just unpausing fixed it. You can lastly... Okay, so we will fix this. What I'm probably going to do is give the duchy to a son. I will probably actually give it to um, Pandolf. Give that duchy title to him. Although Pandolf right now will inherit all of the counties in here. And I think that might be the best way to go. A useful duchy claim? Do that. Some prisoners, huh? None of these prisoners are worth anything to me. <sighs> you got a claim to wear. Do you even have a liege? This is your liege? Oh, this is the former wife. Um, why would I want to execute for dread? That sounds terrifying. I like how this is his mom, and he was like, nah, it's fine. You can have her. Dude. Oh, I can't because they're now my vassals. That's right. So. She, oh my god, she's got the pox. She's got the pox. She's just severely wounded. It looks like she does. I will name a son Turin for sure. Okay. Well, I know the dread is terrifying, guys, but I don't necessarily want to go heavy into dread, I don't think. And, dude, if I execute this poor... This poor, helpless woman who used to be the, the former ruler's uh, wife. Good senator, I'm glad they could help out, help out, man. Alright, so... Hmm. 
I don't know if it's really worth it to like bother with trying to get like hooks in these guys. Well, let's <clears throat> move to house arrest. Move to house arrest. We'll deal with them all in a second. We gotta. What we gotta do is deal with this little situation over here, ASAP. They're all joining my war against him. This guy over here who's trying to sack my lands. Ah, further education. What the hell's going on? Every time my wife comes she finds me bent over a tome. She gets visibly excited. Would you like some help with your studies? Someone to exchange ideas with, or perhaps some new tomes? I recently acquired a volume with an excellent analysis of ancient military campaigns. Yes, we appreciate your guidance. Ooh. Tyranny's just, ooh, I, so I can have a chance to have it go to one of them. And them studying stewardship is actually really good. She's 56, and I'm not old, per se. I'm 44. So I would get Brilliant Strategist, which would be nice. But, Charismatic Negotiator, Pandolf would get Thrifty Clerk. Pandolf's the direct heir. What is Pandolf's skills right now? He's got nine stewardship, which isn't terrible. And I could give her the ability to study learning, which would give her three more learning, which would then go to help me, or mastermind philosopher. Monthly learning, ooh. Hmm. So basically what it's doing is, it's taking one of their existing skills and upgrading it one. See? So he's already a indulgent wastrel. And it's going to give him thrifty clerk. I, for example, already have skilled tactician. This is going to give me brilliant strategist. Uh, Aerodon, I'll show you in a sec. So I think what we do maybe is... I think do Pandolf and do Indulgent. Throw throw a feast! I think we should tutor Pandolf. At the very at the very least, he'll get this, which is a bonus to his stewardship and learning, because he's gonna be my direct heir. Maybe we'll go with that. You should tutor Pandolf instead. Um, although this would be pretty nice because it's gonna increase her learning. How long until this? Five years, we'll probably be okay with that. Hello from Indonesia, how are you, man? Yeah, I agree with you, true survivor. That's what we're gonna do. Should tutor Pandolf. Yes, so that went 35% chance and it succeeded. Um, we auto save because we hit first of January and above domain limit. So people wanted to see where my vassals are at. I mean, they're not terrible right now. It, we'll fix it as soon as we get above that. Uh, domain limit. Duke Hamlin's an asshole, though. Yeah, we'll fix this in a sec. We need to get back here and, and help out with this war. Oh, let me do the... This. Oh... How many months is it going to take? Usually it tells me how many months. Three years. Four years. This is just not going to go up. Three years, three years, three years. I think we won't worry about it yet. Domestic, we're on domestic affairs. I have... I'm having the notes in my translation of the Ar Arithmetica read back to me when I snapped with some understanding. Scribe, add the following commentary. Unlike the scriptures, this work posits that we gain 150 and lead down a path of cynicism. As evident from the will of God. Ooh. Mm. 
We did not take Benevento, Fenris. They've actually declared war on me. Arrogant, fickle, and greedy. <clears throat> I think we maybe go the piety route here. Because I'm about to get some more uh, renown or prestige when I... Hmm. When I usurp that title. We are at negative prestige, yes. We just got there right now. It's still the Pope's. The, uh, the, the Pope, though, is allowing them to be automated, like automatic vassal, whatever the hell it is. Um, okay, so I need to decide here. Kind of like it is, Alex. It's, it's, it's just a world thing. <laughs> trying to decide. Okay. So we'll get the prestige up. Let's lead down a path of cynicism or zealousness to... Because I, I really do... Let's go piety because I really want that uh, the holy order. Jesus Christ, man. Another secret. Why is... Now we can create the the tie the uh ooh, we can ransom Philippa, huh? Okay, now all of a sudden we can ransom people. What the hell? What's going on here? Let's ransom off Philippa. That'll do that. And we will get the Duchy of Drakian soonish. We need to go smash out go help out Salerno down here. What is this? Ooh, you will lose decisively. We recently disembarked. That's right. We can't attack Rome. But I can attack the Duchy of Benevento. Yes, I got it. Known far and wide. Is that noteworthy? That's what that was? Yeah, I think it was noteworthy. Yeah, the Uphill Dynasty. Alright, I find myself working on the translation of the Arithmetica for hours under the flickering light of a candle. Often I will barely notice my notice time passing. My scribe reminds me, however. My lord, it must be past midnight by now. It is not time to rest. It is, an, it, it, is it not time to rest? Will improve slightly. The transition will be concluded faster. I get 14 stress, which isn't too terrible. I've got plenty. Uh, yes, some sleep will do us all good. Remain unchanged. You lose stress. I got eight. We'll do this. Whoa, whoa! What the hell? He completed the siege on Salerno, and he's going to force this. All right, well, we learned. We learned. So we lost Fogia, unfortunately, there. I, I, for, I always forget that, like... Okay, Jesus Christ, there's just fucking non-stop pop-ups today. Yes, the translation is done. Holy God. Ugh. We didn't even need to lose that. That that's kind of a that's kind of a bummer, but that's a lesson to everyone. So taking the place of my library. Okay, that's top taught me too so much. Accomplished translator. Translation book. Good. All right, we need to figure out what the hell happened here. So, two of are captured by Duke Panda. What are you killed in battle on Salmo? Isn't he our? Yep, he was our spy master. Well,
my wife and everything. My sister. Okay, so I can get married, available perk. Oh man, glad I didn't see that. No, he was not in charge of the army, Olaf. Development and county efficiency. Pedagogy, your wards get <coughs> additional skills and can become your friends. Clergy opinion plus 10. Costs us to hire court physicians. Court physician treatments have better outcomes, which is not bad. Learning per level of devotion. Ooh. Different faith opinion plus 15. Faith conversion cost minus 75%. That's nice. Different culture opinion plus 15. Ignore negative culture. Ooh. That's huge because I do have a negative culture over here. These guys are all Greek. Yeah, touche, true survivor. I definitely should have... I should have actually just gone into Salerno. In fact... I wasn't here at the beginning. Who is he playing as? I am playing as the Duke of Apulia. I, I just... I, I can't... I hate this. I hate this guy. You know what? I'm, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do the autosave. Are you a Chad? Yeah. Of course. Is do I not look enough like one? <laughs> the unfortunate thing is that even if I get over here, I can't do anything about this siege because we'll be freshly disembarking. I'm going to command now, so I won't get uh, some fine chat gameplay. Okay, we'll go piety. I'm loving this game, too. Like, every, like, I find myself learning so much every fucking time I play. Uh, so keep here. You don't want to raise new troops directly next to the capital, um, but I probably could have done that. We can if we if it becomes an issue here. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Who was killed in the siege? Oh, we got a better bishop actually. Um. Duke Pandolf's about to get the, the hard dick of the the hard dick of justice. My wife was captured. Ugh. This guy is just gonna get karate chopped in the throat. Okay, so now. I got it. Oh my god. It's, it's so much, it's like, it's like giving me anxiety. All right, we're gonna go down to open-minded. Scheme discovered. As soon as my fabricated hook on Duke Richard has been discovered. Ugh. Curses indeed. Yeah, now I can swap this guy. I don't understand what army this guy's commanding. He should be my primary leader. <clears throat> Alright, so we control Benevento. We capture Duke Pandolf's wife, Princess Archbishop Vulhild. 
of Benevento. <clears throat> Look at this! Not so cool now, dick! This motherfucker. I know, it, uh, that's what I thought, he would be waging a war on his own, but I don't see his forces out anywhere, and that's why I'm like... Yeah, we won that war alright. I'm just kind of be done with it now. Um, yeah, so let's just finish it off. End the war. Enforce these demands. Boop. You gotta pay a lot of money to me now, dude. Shit, bird. Sir dick to you, good man. Richard? I didn't know you were a dick. Can you do a prisoner exchange? Oh, I could have I could have ransomed out their other thing, his like his children, but it's probably better that I didn't. My son is married Elizabeth. Scheme has been exposed. Mm. So let's stop doing this. Because there's no reason to. 6% chance of actually going through. So let's stop. Um... Uh, I don't think you can, Chris. It's a good question, though. Do you can converted to Sicilian? Good. Can I get my damn wife back, please? The cro Wait, what's the question? in the upper right corner. Oh, we'll pay the gold. But why, I wish I could just do an exchange. Like, I find that kind of stupid. Wifey's coming back. It's just... Did he put her in the dungeon? Like how he doesn't even want his wife back. He's like, yeah, I got yours. You can keep mine. Deuces, bro. Like, have at her. Uh, Mark, not very often. Wait for the tenth of July. All right, he hasn't given me my wife back. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I miss her. I'll throw a feast, Christian Lord. Get there, man. I promise. What's this? Why? What? Oh, he's already considering stuff. I'll, sh I'll talk to you. I'll talk to I will talk about that in just a sec, David. Check for single ladies in your area. Is this guy doing a little war to expand himself? 
Yes, yes, yes. Give me my wife back, you jerk. No, you want your wife? You don't care about it. So I'll get a weak hook. You know what I should have done? Was done this, I'll get a weak hook. I could have used the weak hook to get my wife back. So that's a life lesson, guys. We're going to do that right now. This guy's... Dude, this guy's got some... I gotta have this guy join my court. Like, look how his, look at his learning. He's a dwarf. <laughs> Dwarfs and hunchbacks are all welcome in my court. This is an inclusive court of Sicily. I do have a Tyrion. Okay, so we'll get this. I I mean, he's nineteen. I, I think he'd be kind of a cool guy to have as my dwarf for my 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 brother, or my 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 heir. Don't give him a crossbow. I don't know if I want to, like, sink his opinion of me. Yeah, we'll recruit him. And I demand his conversion, so he'll get away from, uh... You guys can pronounce that better than me. A <laughs> Dude, I love... Okay, so just look at this... Look at this character. So he's a compassionate gentleman. And he's very gregarious. And he's honest. And he's gluttonous. Is this Tyrion? And he's also, look, he's a mastermind philosopher and he's a dwarf. This is Tyrion. Well, this is this is HBO's Tyrion. Uh, book Game of Thrones is mismatching eyes, hunchback, very gnarly. Lustful, missing lustful for sure. Wait. Oh man. Thought I was gonna I thought it was just gonna be like, ah, swing whatever way I want. <laughs> no, I, I he would be better at learning, but I think he would have a higher intrigue. I'd say one of the um one of my favorite things about someone was asking about this guy, he's Russian. Um one of my favorite things about uh the book version of Tyrion and um the eunuch. I can't remember the eunuch. But when they have conversations in the book, it, it, they talk about the subtlety that their words are saying. Like, if he says, like, oh, yes, uh, the birds are looking good in King's Landing today, it, Tyrion pops into what the subtext to that actually means. And that is obviously missed when you're doing, when you're dealing with a show and you cannot illustrate Varys. Thank you. Um, you can't illustrate the actual subtext because... Unless you're doing like a film noir where you can actually speak about the subtext, you can't do that. But I think that's probably one of the strengths of the book is you get so much more intrigue in the books because of them talking about the 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 uh, reading between the lines types of situations, which is really cool. <sighs> I shall get a hook upon you. And you're no one of worth anymore. Uh, take the vows. Just... I don't have any dread, so just be gone. Not a movie critic. Okay, so we need to deal with a ton of stuff here. Not to pause it again, but I just did. Now this... Oh, 
waiting for him to accept the other one. Now give me my niece back. Ransom, use a hook. Now, if I had done that, I would not have spent. I would not have spent 100 gold on my wife. Um, I don't mind doing it, but that's just a lesson for you. anyone that's watching. If you have an important character in that is imprisoned by the enemy team, and you have another one of their prisoners, release it for the hook. Use the hook to get your important character back, so you're not paying 100 gold. So, there's there's your lesson for the day. If you didn't learn anything from my history lesson. Okay, so let's see how we divide this land. Defending against Du Lessons in the Holy War for County of Orid. Attacking Bilisius in the County of Apirius. Iprius, I think you guys even said it was called Iprius. Defending against Dan, they're just they're they're dealing with a lot of crap over there. Exactly, Kipir. 100%. That isn't a much out your prisoner um, exchange. <clears throat> what are our views, guys? We've got 300 bros watching here today. Only 138 likes, though. Pump up those likes. Please press that little uh, thumb button. Helps me out a ton. Uh, we will be doing a giveaway here at the end of the uh, stream, though, so be on the lookout for that. So let's just go over real quick what we've done. Uh, the Byzantine Empire had a bit of a fracturing over here, and it split off into a bunch of separate independent chunks. And we were able to take the Duchy of uh, Drakian, and we're actually going to create that title right now. <clears throat> and I can't hold the title, because I, I have the Duchy of Sicily and Salerno. <clears throat> so we're going to say before we do all this, because we're going we're gonna to discover how this works and how it progresses into our succession. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look here. So we have to create this duchy. We don't have to. But the reason I'm going to create the duchy is because we are a confederate partition for now. Uh, and a little bit later, we will hopefully progress to a partition. Um, it's just we need to get there. Any, any one of the enemy side, true survivor, just to get a hook. The hook allows you to do the exchange for free. So let's decide how this works and how we should do this. So we want to create the Duchy of Drakian. We're going to do that first. Um, and I'll press these buttons all in time. So let's all lay out what we're going to do. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong in this and if I should change some stuff. So we have got, again, Duchy of Drakian. We're going to create that duchy. If we look at our succession law, Prince Pandolf will inherit the Kingdom of Sicily and the Duchy of Salerno, as well as the County of Salerno and the counties in Drakian. And Prince Tyrion will inherit the Duchy of Sicily and all of the counties of Sicily. So... My idea is to create the Duchy of Dorakian, and I will be over my two duchy limit. I will then give the duchy title to Prince Pandolf. If I give it to Prince Pandolf, then Pandolf should inherit Salerno, the Kingdom of Sicily, and the Duchy of Dorakian. Is that true? And then... Uh, Tyrion will have Sicily. Okay, just one more time for the assumption. So, we are going to create the Duchy of Dorakian. It will put me at three duchies against my two duchy limit. I will then give the duchy of Dorakian to Prince Pandolf so that when I die, Prince Pandolf will inherit the Kingdom of Sicily, the duchy of Dorakian, and then the duchy of Salerno, as well as all counties in between. And then Prince Tyrion should get just this. 
I think so too, because it's supposed to split it in half. So we're going to see what happens here. So let's press this button. Let's just see. We saved it all beforehand. We'll do it one more time just to make double sure. So if you're confused about succession laws, this is where you should kind of uh, clue in right now. We'll do this together and we'll find out what is going to do what. The succession is here. Create the duchy. Yeah, we should probably grant that to someone, but I don't know who. Creating this duchy. Oh, so that is interesting. So that all went to Tyrion, but we're going to grant it to Pandolf. I want to go to Pandolf. Why doesn't want to go to Pandolf? Interesting. Why can't that happen? So you see what happened, right guys? Almost all of it now goes to Tyrion. So why did that happen? Yeah, but why is it in Tyrion's succession? Right now, I get, I get that, like... I can't... <clears throat> But that's not equal. We've got three duch We've got f uh, three duchies total. I can grant it to Tyrion right now. I can press this button, Prince Tyrion. I can grant that to him. Well, let's see. Let's this. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Let's grant Tyrion this. That will land him, essentially. And he will become the Duke of Drakian. And succession will go... Okay, so here's... That's interesting. So now, Prince Tyrion is the Duke of Drakian and the Duke of Sicily. You personally can only have two... Interesting. Okay. So if this was a partition law, I would imagine in that case, um, Pandolf is, un they're both unlanded. So here we are back before we did everything, before we created everything. I don't want to kill Tyrion. <clears throat> I'll be honest. Okay, so right now, as it is, I could not create the duchy title, and Pandolf will get the counties that are associated in um, Drakian. And then... Or I could do this. Grant titles. I could grant him all these titles, and he becomes essentially the de jure count of Drakian. Okay, let's do what Evelation just said. Okay, so we, we did that. He becomes our vassal. We create this. We grant it. We cannot grant it to... So that automatically goes to him. Interesting. Grant titles. Why, if I click that, I can click this. Oh, it's the Duchy of Drakian. Okay.
Let me, let me try that real quick. So, in this scenario, Prince Pandolf the Fourth, I don't know where the fourth fucking came from, would, he would maintain his title as the Duke of Salerno and of the Duchy of Dracian. He would inherit the Kingdom of Sicily and the County of Salerno, and then Tyrion would become the Duke of Sicily. Interesting. Okay. Why does it say the Duchy of Salerno? That's not the Duchy of Salerno. I guess it, he's he's choosing that as his primary title. Dude, Great Book of Grudges, what's up, man? Guys, please check out Great Book of Grudges YouTube channel. If you're looking for some Total War Warhammer fun speculation, some Warhammer fantasy lore, dude, he covers like, so he has like the tomes of all the Warhammer fantasy stuff, like just like Sotek and I do. Like, if you're looking for someone who's up and coming and covering a ton of Warhammer fantasy right now, Great Book of Grudges is your guy. He's a great, great dude. How's your how's your shoulder, man? You doing all right? Yes, thank you, Crisps. <clears throat> now give away the counties in Sicily, save for one to the other vassals. Interesting. Yeah, I know pa I know Tyrion will still be Pandolf's vassal, and I'm fine with their relationship. I'm just kind of trying to get a better mind for this, because I thought that doing what I did would have made it so that Pandolf would have had more going for him. No, I don't. I don't want to disinherit Tyrion. I, I think they're both very good, solid heirs. And I, having an heir myself or a brother myself, and him getting like cut down by my other vassals, I'm kind of not too worried about it. Oh, restore his heritage with Pandolf. Interesting, David. Okay, so let's load one more time. And again, we're just trying to kind of smash around this whole succession duchy title thing so that we can all learn this portion a little bit better together. Um, I have a really good understanding of it, but I think at this point, um, it's very interesting to see how this in specific works uh, as part of my confederate partition. Like, see, right now, he gets all the constituent parts of the duchy, but doesn't get the duchy itself. <clears throat> You need Sergi? It was a torn labrum. What was it? Yeah, I landed Prince Pandolf, and he got a Ponzi name about him. Dick. Carl, I love this game. Uh, so last night I started in uh, Abyssinia campaign uh, right down here and I didn't go to sleep until like 2.30 in the morning and I was like oh I'll just play for like an hour I gotta stream tomorrow I'll go to bed and I was just like no I was looking to see if it all congealed at the bottom <laughs> Strylance for life because I have a uh... Sneak Energy. Use Lion at checkout to give Lionheart X10 a 10% commission on your purchases of Sneak Energy. It's Sneak Energy. It's got a bunny on it. It's Sneak Energy. Um, I put this in here. And sometimes it congeals at the bottom if it's cold. Yes, it's Coptic Christianity. It's actually really, really, really fun. Yeah, there it is. There's, there's that congealium. You know you're a bro when you're pouring from one insulated thing into another insulated thing. Stephanie, we gotta drink way more of this pre-workout before we get to Havasu. Because I swear to God, if the quad bikes aren't amped up, I'm just not going in that water. For the record, I've never been to Havasu. torn rotator cuff oh man i'm so sorry but hey that's not a bad surgery and that that will that will come back dude you're looking like a 
like a four to six months recovery. But if you find a really solid PT, you'll torn rotator cuff is not too huge of a deal. It, it's not a knee, that's for sure. <clears throat> okay, Giant Bravo, why don't you calm down? <clears throat> okay. Let's go over this one more time and let's try to do this properly because we... Should we even create the duchy title? Is... Or should we wait on that? Dude, look how sick this coat of arms is, by the way. So... Tyrion, I'm fine with him being the Duke of Sicily. I kind of want him only to be the, du the Duke of Sicily. And I don't... Yeah, I can't create the title without giving it to someone. Because I only... I need to be... Uh... <clears throat> so this is who's going to inherit what without the duchy created. Uh, Rydell will probably be streaming for another hour and a half. <clears throat> in a little bit we'll be able to do partition and the, remember the only difference between confederate partition and partition is that no new titles will be created which is huge we do need to deal with our domain issue too so we should grant this to someone I mean, I've got this barony, and I don't really need it. I just did it because that one guy is an asshole. Okay, uh, grant to a low noble. Let me... Let me see what I got here. Exactly, Aradom. The, the Confederate Partition will create that title if I don't. So I can give this to someone. I can give it to my wife. Oh, Catholicism, that's right. Whoops. I got a Dwarf Knight? How badass is this Dwarf Knight? No, why are you fighting? No, bro. You need to calm down right now. You need to put, put that... Put that sword down, my dude. Forbid that. Forbid that too, Tyrion. What are you doing? You, on the other hand, can go to war with all you want. And you can create a new duchy for seconds time and go on. Okay, okay, so let me see what you said, uh, Markuva. Oh, this is why it's better to have a duchy in your personal domain if you're a king. <laughs> we have the dwarf to Gimli. Can I even do that? He's telling me I can. There was a button to rename. Find a character who is content. Who's dead in my court? Oh, Christ. My nephew. You can have good stewardship, little bro. <coughs> Chancellor of Count Jonathan. <coughs> Dude, if I get... I want that crab suit. Like, I wish I could find that crab suit. Nice. Okay, I'm sorry. I keep getting ahead of myself right now. <clears throat> Unleashing the ban hammer. So, let's look at this, and let's just finalize this real fast. So, we have the Duchy of Drakian. We 
Pandolf is inheriting the Kingdom of Sicily and the Duchy of Salerno with just simply the County of Salerno. We don't even have the full Duchy of Salerno. This one, uh, the Barony of Camarda, is owned by the Duke of Apulia. Dickhead. Um, and he's getting all of the constituent counties that make up this duchy. Tyrion is getting the entire duchy of Sicily, including Ag Agrigento, Syracusa, Palermo, and the barony of Catalogione. Um, so, how do I make it? We want to make it so that Pandolf inherits... Carmelo, what's up, man? We want to make it so that Carmelo... Or not Carmelo, geez, So that Pandolf inherits two duchy titles. Should I just not create this ducal title and let him do it when he becomes the, the king? Is that the best way to go about this? Um, we should give away this, this barony title. I, I don't... I don't need to do that. This will lower my... Here, we'll grant this to a low noble. I don't really necessarily care what happens here. Okay, how, hover over your son's portrait and see what they are heir to. Drakian, though uncreated, should be listed to be inherited under a confederated partition. Well, he's getting all these, but his titles... Give Pandolf a county in Drakium and then create the duchy. Interesting. Not impossible... Not possible to inherit two titles in this scenario. However, keep in mind, Confederate Partition will only, to my knowledge, create duchy titles if need be. Correct, Aradam. I think it won't create the duchy title unless it needs to do it. Yeah, Dariath, I saw that. I gotta swap that out. A uh, big fan? Probably not. My next one's gonna be Castile. Okay, he'll lose all that action. In fact, let me see something. I'm just gonna... Let's just grant it to a lowborn. I want to see what happens here. Right. That'll that'll do. Whatever. Does that change my succession? No, it doesn't. <clears throat> he might create the duchy title on his own. Interesting. And your heir make Tyrion his vassal after the succession happens. Moppets, he will be his vassal because he, uh, the heir will still be the king of Sicily. Dariath, what happened was uh, a bit ago when we created the duchy title, then Tyrion inherited pretty much everything and Pandolf was only going to inherit these three things. So the Duchy of Salerno, the County of Salerno, and the Kingdom of Sicily, while whereas Prince Tyrion inherited the Duchy of Sicily and the Duchy of Dracian. Dracian. Lee, it, it looks super complicated, but I swear it's not that bad. Uh, which one, Aradam? Are you saying to give uh, Pandolf the duchies? Now grant Drakian duchy to Tyrion. But we don't want him to... I, I, I want Pandolf to, to be... The reason I want Pandolf to have the duchy of Drakium is because I'm thinking of his domains. Remember what I was saying in my, in my, uh, my money video? 
the your domains the ones you personally hold will make the most money for you and if i give uh if i create the duchy of drachium and it goes to Tyrion, then his domains will be the county of salerno and that is it so he'll make so much less money than Tyrion will I could have Pandolf take Sicily. That doesn't necessarily matter to me. I mean, I could give Pandolf these counties right now. And then when he becomes, if you give Tyrion stuff now, he'll get less stuff in succession. So let's try this then. Grant titles. Oh, so I can't give Pandolf Sicily. I could grant, uh, and the reason that I don't want to grant Sicily to Tyrion right now is because, again, these are my personal domains. And if I give them up, I lose tax income. Maybe I just kind of keep it as is, because I think if I create the Duchy of Drakian, it creates an immediate issue for me, because I have to give away the Duchy of Drakian. But at the same time, too, I do have to reduce some of my holdings. So, why don't I give... Why don't I grant titles, then, to my son? Let's see how this works. So what if I grant him... These two. Not yet, Arian. Soon, uh, soon, though. That would put me at my domain size, which would be six, which would be fine. And these are... He's going to inherit these two anyway. Dude, Venice is actually kind of getting pretty horny over there. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I could also give those counties to someone else. Aerodom, thank you very much, man. Five dollar donation, the first donation of the day from Aerodom, dude. Thank you, man. And hopefully that renown and dynasty videos helped you out. <clears throat> if you give Tyrion stuff in Alban, Al, Al, Albany, Albania. Because I also, I need to get my domain limit down. That's that's another thing. We're at eight of six. Um, Robert Bischoff, what I did earlier, I gave this to a guy. I just pressed the button. I was like, eh, go to this dude. I typically give it to someone who's unlanded and content, but I couldn't find anyone that was particularly of good worth. Uh, Morton, can you give me an example? Uh, love your new video, but I think you made a small mistake. I don't think the dynasty claim takes away their title, does it? Doesn't it give you a claim? No, you can actually strip their inheritance. If you give Tyrion stuff in Albany, Sicily should be promised to Pandolf. Unlanded is 
Second donation of the day, five pounder from Mark Platten in my face. Thank you, dude. Uh, this is an unlanded, a low-born individual. Uh, Ganadori. So, Darath, let's let's try this. Let's try it. Remember, we've got this all saved, so we can just bounce back to it. We're, we are learning it together. So, we will grant titles. Okay. If you give Tyrion stuff in Albania, Sicily should be promised to Pandolf. So, let's give him Rakian. The other one on the coast. I want the one that, like, is close to this. I have these two in Antwerp. I know it's not actually that. Oh, I'm sorry, Morton. Then yes, I did. I did uh, miss say something. I made a mistake. Yes, <laughs> sorry about that, dude. So grant this title. See how it goes. We did do that, uh, Evelation. Okay. Looks like Sicily, though, is still going to Tyrion. Now, what happens now if I create the Duchy of Drakian? That all now goes to Tyrion. Interesting. So, that does that. Okay, so even if we do all the counties, got titles, yeah, Darioth, I'm with you on that. That's why, like, I understand the succession system. And what I did initially should have played out the way that you explained. Because I said, okay, if I do this, it should go to Pandolf primarily and not Tyrion. But it did not work like that. And now if I create the duchy. And let's look at the, look at the uh, succession. So what's happening is Tyrion is going to get all of Sicily. Pandolf will get the kingdom. Salerno and the county of Salerno. But he's already prim pretty much in co control of Drakian. We create this. But... See, we cannot grant it to uh, the duchy, even though he Pandolf owns all the counties, we cannot grant them to uh, Pandolf. Very weird. True, I guess. It's because a kingdom counts for two duchy titles, so the game is trying to equalize it based on that instead of land held. Ah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah, we could move our capital back to... <coughs> and I'm actually kind of okay with that. Moving our capital out from... Thomas Arkiwi, it's kind of confusing, man. There's a lot of people saying a lot of different things, so it's a little bit... Um, it's a lot of kind of getting the stuff right. So I think I think if we change the capital back to Palermo, that would fix a lot of issues. I 
Uh, ACS, if we do that, though, we lower our domain amount to a pitiful amount. I know, it's, it's just very confusing. So I'm like, ah, God. So maybe let's try this real quick. Move the realm capital here. That will change succession. And that, oh ho, so Pandolf will now get the Kingdom of Sicily and, or, I'm sorry, the Duchy of Sicily, the Kingdom of Sicily, and then Tyrion will get the, mm, no, I know you're not, I know you're not, don't worry about it, bro, I'm, I'm not actually mad at you or anything like that. So that's a pretty cool, interesting situation. Now, if I were to create now the Duchy of this location, we would have a bit of an issue. So if I were to create this duchy, it then goes... Um, this duchy title will go to Tyrion, because if we're looking at it simply from duchy titles alone, we have one in Salerno, one in Sicily, and the kingdom counts for the fourth one. Uh, accounts for two duchy titles. Now, if we create the Duchy of Drakian, we'll have five. So the kingdom plus Sicily will go to Pandolf, and then Salerno and Drakian will go to uh, uh, Tyrion. Actually, I bet you even, I bet you even the Duchy of Sicily would go to Tyrion. But we do need to move our. So we'll. This is that's a good first move. We'll we'll go with that. I like that. Again, we'll move our, our capital back here to Palermo. What are you doing? You're increasing taxes. You can increase this. this is two years, five months. We'll do Agrigento. What is Agrigento this thing at? 14, 12. I'll increase this. You want to master the titles for Tyrion? Sure. The Duchy of Salerno and the County of Salerno. You can make two kingdoms. Yeah, he won't get... Because, remember, with succession, your primary heir will receive the highest title and the capital, essentially. Under Confederate Petition, your titles will be divided. Uh, da, da, da. The player heir will always be given the primary title and the realm capital. The realm capital being the Duchy of Sicily. Uh, hold your uh, Kanos. Did, did what I just say help you out? So he said, why did the capital move change all the titles? How is the fair balance based on succession law? Because it, basically the succession law is looking at a large if-then statement, right? It's looking at a nested one. So the if statement is, if player heir, then get primary title and realm title. If uh, second heir, then get you know the remainder, right? So since Pandolf is the heir, is the primary heir, he's getting the primary title, which is king. Then he's getting the realm capital, which is now the Duchy of Sicily. So he's getting those two primary titles. And this grants him the county, or the counts, of these subsequent lands. And he was already receiving these countships. And exactly right. Since I don't have a third heir, no new county, uh, no new duchy titles are going to be created, and we're going to push ourselves to partition anyway before then. No problem, Holger. I'm glad I can help you out because you saw me loading this a bunch of times to kind of test things out. So it's kind of um, what happens if you give Tyrion three counties. Well, let's find out. Which counties are you saying in specific? Grant titles. Um, so I can give him, like, the, the counties in Greece. I need to give someone three counties anyway. So it's a matter of, do I give them to Tyrion, or do I give them to Pandolf, and Pandolf's going to inherit that land. So we've moved to capital. I'll grant him these titles. And what happens now if we... 
with the duchy. Okay, so that still goes to Tyrion. Okay, and that's what I thought would happen, but... Load game. Okay. okay. So who do we grant these three titles to? I'm I'm kind of thinking we give them to my son, and my son can be. So these actually are very not developed. 11, 9, 11, 11, 11, 9. When everything in here is at bare minimum 10, 11. <laughs> Edward, it's because we did a... Uh, a holy war here and took out this land. So we didn't gain any new vassals with it. Well, let's give this away. Grant a new noble. Grant a, no a low noble to this guy. That goes to him. So we only need to give away two. Well, Byzantine itself, I mean, they're not the most developed. Take a look here. 15, 12, 14. Yes, this is at 37. But if you look at something, if you come over here to India... Look at all this, 25, 26, 22, 20, 18, 19. All this land is super well developed in, through this little area here. Uh, very likely. Yeah, oh, the Ganges is a... I'm making a video of, like, seven really good campaigns. You should start off with some different kind of starts that are not just strictly Western Europe. Um, and the Ganges is one of them. And remember, you will... You will lost all buildings built, but you and Salerno that way. Fast attack is a joke for everyone. Uh, I... Uh, no, all my, all my buildings are fine. Okay, so who are we giving? So am I granting, taking a look at succession one last time before we can, so we can actually fucking progress. <laughs> am I granting two Greek counties to Prince Pandolf, who is going to inherit all this anyway? Or am I granting two Greek counties to Tyrion, who is only getting the Duchy of Salerno and the County of Salerno? I'm going to wait to create... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or I'm going to wait to create the Duchy of Drachma. Dra Drachma? Drachian. On Prince Pandolf. We'll wait to do that. Oh, good good point, Markova. Markova. Uh, Grandior, you're better off, Grandori, it, to, Ganadori, to develop your capital. Honestly, looking at their stats, looks like Pandolf's going to be the better steward right now. Yeah, I agree with you, Daryoth. So let's do this. Grant titles. We'll give him the county capital of Drakian, And we'll give him... Let me take a look. 
Uh, development is 9. Development is 11. That will give him the two richest ones, I suppose. Or, no, I'll keep the other one. Because it'll give me more money. So we'll give him these two and he'll hopefully build them up. I'd give them to Tyrion, allows them to have more troops, and family members don't cost anything to call to war. Development increases taxes and levies. <clears throat> Prince Guy, how oh, I wish I could bring you back. Located in Turin, though. This should be the way that we go. Right? No, I'm on the bottom of the Total War Boy map called. Price is on the throne. For that reason, I say I'd save up money before he dies for Mercs. Uh, yeah, we could definitely do that, Aradom. We had a bit of that issue earlier, so let's go with that. He shall be a figurehead in Greece. <clears throat> Why does he have that shield? Why is it why is he the count? Why is he the count of I don't get that. Why isn't this his primary title? Interesting. Hmm. And let's look at succession one more time. All good. Okay, let's look at our budding little empire here. He chooses the best... Isn't the best county the one with the highest development? Ah, it's not. Can you theoretically have a high income empire that relies on mercs instead of building your own army? You could, absolutely, Er, er Aaron. It will become an empire soon. Definitely the better stuff. So my goal was to get the empire of Italia. And right now, it looks like, I mean, so we push into Tuscany, and Tuscany, we had a good war with, but they have see now they have croatia as an ally we had a we had the see that's just a bunch of bullshit you know who's this they hungary is attacking we are injured war for the county of slopsk uh We were attacking for, uh, Forenze like proper, but they had like a random Hungarian alliance and brought down the fury of the thunder of the go thunder gods upon me. Fucked me up. Estradinia and Corsica might be a good one. If there's any other lands over here, though, we could. What's up with Athens? Let's take a look at our war targets and what we can declare war on. Prince Pandal's contract, huh? You and I are firm friends. No, he needs more military strength. 515.
Well, he can't declare a dumb war because because of my crown authority. Um, they can't declare war unless I let them. But we need to work on. If you guys do decide to pick the game up, you can still use my link in the description below. Oh man, I forgot to turn this on. Um, and you can pick up either the Royal Edition or the Standard Edition. You'll get a 12% discount and I do get a commission. So if you want to use that, you can find that link in the description. You can go ahead and go about it. Um, you'll be getting it through Fanatical, which will just simply give you a key, which is pretty nice. That you just pop right into... Um, what's it called? Mento. You just simply pop right into Steam. True Survivor says, oh, God damn it, stop over here. 400 of you guys are checking in here today. Please make sure you're liking that stream. So, True Survivor said, do protect it and hook and change. High and high. Uh, I believe the Royal Edition has the the like DLC pass. I'm not sure though, to be totally honest. I don't even know what version I have. Paradox gave me this. They they had a bunch of wars, uh, Pierre. To marry his own? No, no, no. I've created this for you, dude. This, she's gonna give you some sweet wives, bro. What's up, M. Lari? Hi, hi, and title revocation protected. Yeah, because I'm not gonna be revoking his title at all. Yeah, there's no battles, Zaki style. There's no actual battles. They they fight and there's dice that are rolled a bunch of times, basically. I could let him do his own wars, too, and try and expand his own borders. Is that a good idea? I don't want him to go crazy and get himself killed. Uh, Sir Nugget, you have to increase your men at arms. Increasing their level will increase the amount in each subsequent unit. I think that'll do. Oh, we'll get more taxes. Pierre of Monte Cristo, five euro. I enjoy the streams and I like that you respond to comments. Absolutely, man. Oh, God, what's his name? Uh, I don't want to say his name wrong, so I gotta look it up. You know, Pierre, what I really like about you is that. Oh, how fucking dare you would throw this movie? Ugh. It's it's. Uh, I almost said Jean. Uh, Pierre, I like that you have Gerard Depardieu as your uh, your thing, your icon. Also, Count of Monte Cristo is my favorite book. Well, favorite book of the classics. Zaki Style, do not feel like you have to send a single thing, man. Okay. Um, all right. So, do we do a sanctioned war here? Do we do we let him go to war on his own? I'm kind of a little worried since he is my primary heir, and I think it might be best to just kind of hang, let this hang back. I also pay fifty percent less for well, the war regards to the Liege Crown's authority. I, I think we'll let this guy hang back. We'll do this. He gets protected. We get more taxes and everything. 
The spouse didn't like it. She's like a fucker. The PC to play this Beast Slayer is not a very demanding game. Yes, Alexander Dumas. He wrote three Musketeer books. Your ransom offer. Thank you. Let's save now that we've done all that crap. Interesting, Aradon. Something you mentioned earlier, I think it's better to spread out development, as Fascination's research rate are based off of average, not the highest development. But they're also based off of your individual learning, too. Average development of Sicilian counties. Point and Sicilian counties is important. Uh, no, Cadlio, he kind of does his own thing. Excuse me. Alright, so let's look at our targets here. So, we don't want to create that duchy right now. we got low control. We're we building control over in Slarno. Did I do that here? Six years. Kind of slow. Cool. Whatever. The safe file got corrupted. No! I'm going to be... We're going to start a new campaign on Tuesday or Wednesday. And we're going to do Castile. Because I want to make... I want to land El Cid. And I want him to be kind of like... I want to try and induct him into my family and make him a part of uh, the royal line. Okay, so... We could go on a pilgrimage. I think we need to do this for sure. And the primary reason I want to do it is because we're we're getting close to changing our succession laws and we need these two to like us. But let's do the feast. So who can declare war on? We don't want to do that one. A cheery gathering. The guests are gathered in the great hall. Lords and ladies from near and far reaches of the realm. The mood is bright and spirits are high at the feast as the feast begins. Goody. Okay, where's this? Don't want to do this one. Don't want to do this one. And I don't want to do that one. Because this... Is for down here, and I don't want that. I don't want that either. So. Feast, the right woman for the job. My dear wife, Aslog, has been working hard to ensure that everything about the feast goes smoothly. Ooh, I, I realized I turned the, the volume up when I was playing solo. I'll turn it down a little bit for you guys. Um... Uh, the food arrives on time, the guests are all seated in the right place, and everyone seems content. With Athlog beside me at the great table, everything is ready. I squeeze her hand and smile at her, before rising to announce the start of the celebrations. Yes, household efforts. Direct vassal opinion plus five, courtier, nice, good. I'll just pop this down too. Okay, so then, how long is this going to take? 18 months for you. You're still forging a... So we are forging a claim over here. Try and take this. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. I did everything I could, ensuring that Mayor Violante and Mabel would be as far from each other as possible. It was not enough, and now they have come to blows. In the middle of my feast, one of my guards is close to the brawl and looks to me for the order to intervene. Throw Mabel out to cool out. I don't... Who are you? You're all the way up there. You're new. You're new here, huh? Oh, she's actually... She's pretty good. She's pretty good. She's a pretty good steward. Restrain Violante until things calm down. You go closer to forming a rivalry with Mayor Violante. Ooh. 
or mere friendship with Mir. I, I don't know if I want a friendship with Mir Violante here. I mean, but I have—I I guess I kind of have the uh, the opinion to spare, I suppose you could say. Um, she's my spy master, though. Able to lose this twenty for fifteen years, gains twenty for twenty years. Sided with me, sided against me. I'm gonna go with uh, restrain Violante. You're just—you're some meager mare. Is she a known criminal? Ah, adulterer. In the mud. Okay, there it is. Invite knights for sure. Mayor Clemenza, huh? You don't have any money. Can't do shit with you. Let's. I, I think we need some more knights, don't we? Actually, into County of Arbanon. Okay, third. Do, 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 do. These are pretty good knights. It'll probably be a DLC, Mark Platten. But we also could go for some better knights too. So we'll invite some knights. Please do go on. I listen intently to Mabel as she carelessly reveals all manner of things. Distracted by things to get one last drop from her tankard, she is oblivious to how carefully I'm paying attention. Once she realizes she starts getting up, when she realizes she starts getting up, I'm only rambling. <laughs> it's not true anyways, any of it. Oh, they just happen to be very interesting rambles. You learn of Mabel Hutthel's disputed heritage secret. Oh, I have so many claims on her, it's so sad. <laughs> I probably won't buy the knights, but at least I'll have the ability to. With everyone headed for their respective homes, I'm proud to say that the feast was a success. I have my wife Aslug to thank for that, of its, to, to thank, to thank for much of its success, and I feel nothing but gratitude as she sees the last few guests off. Until next time, every guest gains 20 opinion view. Boom! There it is. How my succession laws now, motherfucker? Everybody approves of Daddy Dick. Good. Can we hit 300 likes, guys? We are still doing that giveaway. We are at almost 400 folk walk watching here today. Let's get it going on. Okay, your neighbor, Basilius Theodorus, won against your other neighbor, Du Palo, in the Dubjura. Isn't Dubja? Does that mean thank you? Oh, Dub. Dobrugia claim on the county of Epirus. 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 Is that what it is? Hmm. I has arrived. Who are you? Whew. You're a pretty good knight. Look how expensive of a good knight though are you. Fabricate a claim against him? Oh no! My love is dead. Oh no! She died. Yes! Yeah, I think for 70 gold it's gonna have to happen. This guy's a beast. Check my donation, sure. You know what? I think something's broken here. Streamlab, stream elements. I think I've been missing donations. Yo, what's up, dude? What is problem here? This is 
Not good for you, not good for me. Hey, yo! Yeah, what the hell? So let me press this button. I missed some donations. We had two donations. There they are. That's both the notifications here. One from Garland Green for five dollars, saying, "Hope things are well despite the fires. Stay safe and keep up the good work." And thank you very much, dude. I'm safe. The last two years, I was on the brink of being evacuated, so we're good. But my brother, on the other hand, he is not so safe. Well, he's safe, but he's there. He's very close to the fires, but he's okay right now. And then a $6 donation from Chris saying, after this Hunchsome playthrough, we need to do a living watching of Hunchback of Notre Dame. Of Notre Dame. I have seen the North uh, Korean style. I haven't, I didn't really watch it all the way through, but kind of don't understand it too at the same time, because I didn't watch it all the way through, so that's on me. Yeah, this guy's expensive, but I really want him. He's a monster. Brush those forced in you. Were it so easy, Mark? What's going on over here? Ooh, hoo, hoo. a holy war, huh? It's okay, Mark. I don't I don't blame you. Who's this? Neutral army. <laughs> Is there a way to only raise a smaller army? Yes. Or you could you could break apart one army and then disband it. I don't remember how to raise Oh! So click this button. And you can raise a local army. Raise all armies that are closest to this particular rally point. Let's say I changed rally point to like right here. And it's 337 now. But let's say if I change it all the way over to here. It's okay. That's the local levies, I guess. I thought it changed that. Oh, I can add multiple. I see. So you would add another rally point, it looks like. So let's say I wanted to raise another army somewhere else. You press the add button. There you go. You can see now I've got two different armies you're going to raise in these locations. Does this help you out? So if I rally this army at Sabra, well, it's going to only raise this much. stuff over here we've got uh, 165 okay uh, let's uh, let's do a small pilgrimage too so why would I want to imprison you what the hell did you do ah the old burning crotch huh like a good fornicator when I see one usually if she had more gold I'd imprison her Go on a small little uh, pilgrimage here. Minimum cost is 90. Might as well do it. Again, we're trying to make a holy order here. <clears throat> um, no, we don't want to do the big one. Vatican. I think we'll go just to the Vatican just to get a quick one in. It's right next door. No, we'll just do... I, I just want to get a small uh, bit of piety here. As I prepare for my journey, know that I will travel safely under the protection of God. Though I will not be gone for long, 
I pray for the well-being of my realm and my absence. Mm -hmm. You are at, you are at an active. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, this army's kind of getting beat up. I would like to get another regiment of, and get armored footmen. Because they really help out a lot. Because the nice thing about Armored Footmen is they do have a counter. <coughs> I'm sorry. They counter Spearmen. Pikemen counter... Um, no. Light Footmen counter Heavy Armored Footmen. But they have no terrain effect penalties, which is nice. Pilgrimage, a rude story. Uh-oh. Passing by the campfire, one of my fellow travelers is telling a story he once heard about some king to raucous laughter. They all fall silent when I approach, except for the storyteller. Ah, don't worry, my lord. You're nothing like the, not even this story. It's about the king of some faraway place called Sicily. I don't know why he sounds like that if he's Sicilian. If he's Sicilian. I, I, I don't know why. Really now, how about you tell me more about this king? Guards, fetch my whip. Perhaps it is time I found others to travel with. Varied pilgrimage companions. Character has traveled with a wide range of... Ooh! Opinion of different cultures plus 10, and different cultures' opinion plus 10. That could help out with all of the cultures that I'm dealing with over here, uh, because they're not Sicilian just yet. These guys are still very Greek. But I wonder what this. Ha I wonder how, because yes, this gives me stress. But I wonder how it affects uh, the future. Uh, this just gives me twenty dread, and I spend fifty uh, uh, piety. Sky at the moment. <laughs> Blade Runner Sky for our... hey, You're not fucking wrong, bro. Um, yeah. Let's go with that. I think what we'll do for our Castilian campaign, we'll do some we'll do some dread stuff. And I'll like, you know, like the the dread king of Castile, something fucking cool like that. But how what's going on over here? I unfortunately don't have any more claims in Greece. Because I would love to push into Athens. Or try to smash out the rest of the Byzantine Empire over here. The Albino Dread Kings of Castile. <laughs> Guys, I cannot wait. Pilgrimage, all roads lead to Rome. Pilgrims flock to Rome from all over the Christian world. Some follow the, the Via Francescena. Francigena. Uh, others take less well-known paths. In the end, we all converge here at St. Peter's Basilica, where the great man himself was put to rest. Standing here with the other pilgrims, I sense a feeling of solemn unity and fellowship shared among the amongst the gathered, all having overcoming overcome, all having overcoming various trials and tribulations along their journey. I have walked the holy path. Determined pilgrim for ten years. Good, 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 Anakin. I don't think Vlad the Impaler was uh, if my memory serves me correctly like 14th century yeah born 1431 so yeah he's 15th century so the game ends by that time Return home. Returning has been a long one, but I have finally come home again. While much remains the same, something has changed in how the priests and bishops treat me. It's good to be home! Alright, so how close are we to the Holy Order, man? Okay, we need we need to get to 1,000 piatites. 
Yes, Castile does have partition from the start, and so does Abyssinia. Dude, this army's not looking pretty good. You're not you're looking like you're not gonna have a good time over there, brother. Can you play as Wallachia? Around here? Or push him back to the, the Black Sea? I can't. I don't. Uh, you can play as Transylvania. I thought. I'm sorry. My Eastern European geography clearly is shit. Aha! Who are you? You're not the best. Ooh, you <laughs> Fucking fuck. Marshall earns respect. County of Salerno gained Marshall guidance for five years. Excellent skill. Okay. Your neighbor. Oh. So Athens is really doing a lot to uh, Dobrugia here. The flare of Targovist. Targovista. Yeah, I was like, I'm in Crimea. This isn't right. <laughs> uh, because I, I've said this before. There are certain words that I knew how to pronounce that when I started doing YouTube, people confused me on how to pronounce them. And since I'm such a people pleaser, I'm like, oh, I'll try to pronounce it the right way. Be like, what the fuck are you doing that for? So that's, that's not how it's pronounced. That's how prowess and prowess was born. I always said prowess growing up. And when someone's like, it's pronounced pro S, I was like, are you kidding me? And then I got enough comments that were like that. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm wrong. I'll change it to pro S. And then the people were like, it's pro S guy. I'm like, I thought that from the start. And when someone goes, look up the pronunciation online, go fuck yourself. You know how convoluted that process is? They use a robot to do it. It's like, the word is pro S. Like, what the hell was that? <laughs> That's what I was going uh, I need my court. 16 days up before we get to the little, um, this little action going here. So. I want this holy order. But I'm going to spend the money on this claim. It's only 66. You get an unpressed claim. Ooh, they lose some pretty bad opinion to me, though. And the problem, too, with this is look how much this, like. Well, let's just get the unpressed claim. We'll get the unpressed claim. How, hello, how many kills would we give him for fellow 400 people? Um, I only have one code to give. If someone else wants to give away a code, um, I can give you a link. That you can use to purchase and you can give me a code to give away, but I only have one for right now. <laughs> a title for killing every dwarf you meet? Yeah, high elf. Um. Ooh, oh god, oh! Let's just get that. We'll get that done. So we've got the pressed claim here now. The issue is this land belongs to a pretty powerful dude. Oh, it's not that strong. It's the War of the Beard 100%. It's 
staring at the stars. From all my evenings watching stars, I've seen with my own eyes what I have only heard of before. The stars move at different speeds and reverse their course at different times, but seemingly in, the, in large groups, depending on which celestial sphere they belong to. Indeed, with the right calculations, one could even predict their movement. My archbishop does not approve, of course. Leave the skies be. The celestial realm is for the clergy to know. <laughs> well, we'll find my answers in the heavens. Then the heavens gives me stewardship, learning, and prestige. You're right. I should focus on earthly matters. Gotta go with this one. I want those. I want those pie titties. I mean, me as a person, I would choose that. But I've done two. If we look at the role play of this guy, he's a determined pilgrim. He's done two pilgrimages. Yes, he is a very learned individual, but I love Wolfenstein. I'll check it out, Dragon. Dragon sends all the best, all the best music. Um, Dwarven Cloak of Beards. Yep. We're going to go with this because we want that pie. I mean, ideally, I probably maybe should go with this because it does help out my prestige. And my prestige does need to get higher. But I want those, that pie. And the big thing about that pie, too, is we could use it to... Damn. When can I do this again? In a year, I can do this. What's my sins? I don't have any sins. What the hell is this? Oh, it's Duke Jordan. Whoopsies. Ain't, ain't, ain't sinful, bro. Alright, so we can take this. Which is good. We can press this claim. Got it, ACS. Thank you. Alright, so what war's going on here? Your neighbor, Emir, has won against Galarina in the Holy War for the High Chieftain of Kwar. Where is that? Ah, down there. Okay. What's up, gamer guy? How you doing, dude? Byzantine Empire losing these guys, they they declared independence, it looks like. I should go try and like what's happening over here. I see more for county claim the county of Zatek. Oh, it's all the way up there. I'm not sure Evelation, that's why I really want to do it. Your po your neighbor probably has won against in the war for their prince. Archbishop of Alatium. Gimme Benevento papacy, you jerks. Ugh. I wish I could. I wish that I could do that. Okay, so how much more do we need here? We need 350. Damn it, damn it, damn. My hairstyle? Man, my hairstyle's the best style. I was just looking at my wife. I was just looking at her. <laughs> looking at my wife, she's dead. She's the rock of this kingdom. How can a heart endure this kind of pain without a, without breaking? It cannot be possible. She lived to be 58. 
Yet here I am, my heart beating on whilst yours has gone quiet. Oh, Aslog, my beloved, life will not be the same without you. At least the memories remain, and then cue Metallica just ripping guitar solo. But I hope you find peace, Aslog. My wife. My wife. Which greatly affects my innovations. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I don't know if I want any new heirs. Necessarily. I think I should marry now for... um, Because, yeah, I'm only 46 and I could produce some more heirs. But I think that if I get more heirs in this... Um, it would be kind of a situation that would kind of beat apart my current succession plans. Yeah, new heirs with partition. I'm not about that. I think what I should do here is find a spouse that is infertile, to be honest. Hey, David Renau, what's up, dude? Whoa. Is she thir 31? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we'll pass on the leper. Thanks. Christ, she's barren. My other lover died, Shadow Khan. I mean, I could go for genius, sure, I could do that, but I don't want to inherit or, or create more inherit issues. Or, um, because remember, it's a partition, man, so it's going to be a really bad situation. Nordheim, that's pretty badass, Emily. Mean. Think of the mustard taxes. Good call. Go with a, a high sum of all skills. That's not a bad. That's not a bad call at all. I could go with her, Adriana. Not landed. Don't have to worry about anything in that case. Whoa, Zenobia has got twenty-four learning. Yeah, I mean, if I had a genius daughter, that'd be great. Going by just some of all skills, I see like she's genius. She's infertile in all that action. Is Zenobia's beast? Because that learning skill is immediately going to contribute to me, which is really nice. She is older than your wife that just died. Did my wife? Yeah, my dad. She was 58, 56. It does hate my guts. <laughs> Minus 50, to be exact. But I could always woo her, make her my lover. I say let's organize this by the learning. She is 70? Eat your beast. Okay, let's look at this. Christ. How's 
Her health probably on death's door. She's ailing. Want. Well, Angela Twerkle, the reason I don't want to is because we have a pretty nice succession right now. And uh, he's got a kid who's pretty, a granddaughter. Mm. He's 20. You guys got to start pumping him out over here, guys. I expected more out of you two. Tyrion's got a good situation, too. Although he is hunchback, she's intelligent, and she's a twin. They have yet to have children, though, but they just turned of age, so I mean, give it some time. Give it some time. 98 Marshall? Well, if I have children, it would change my inheritance, correct? Am I not... Am I wrong in thinking that? God, let me... I, I gotta... I'm sorry, guys. I gotta pee so bad. Let me go for it. Catching up what you guys are saying. PCXS, I'm glad it helped you out, man. Glad you're doing better with the game after watching me throw up on the game. As long as I don't have another son, what if I have another son? My guy, I mean, shit. I mean, he is not infertile. Let's just look at all. 
let's look at as alliances. I mean, I could have him take bows. I don't, they're not even a lot of really good... To be totally honest, there's not a lot of good... Okay, even with all fertility options and just alliances, if I sort it by alliance power, there's not a lot of great alliance options here. Get alliance. I could get an alliance with Croatia, which would then mean that Croatia can't help in the war against Tuscany, but I don't have any claims against Tuscany right now. Where's the one that allows me to stay celibate? Just looking for a, a, uh, a an alliance evolution. Learning lifestyle perk that lets you stay celibate. Restraint. Uh, Zyphir, we'll probably be streaming for another 20 minutes. We'll be doing the giveaway at the end of that 20 minute period. You can take the Embrace Celibacy and Abandon Celibacy decisions. Ah. Well, I am a seducer character. Because <laughs> I've got... Oh, I did not. I thought I, got... I thought I grabbed it. Okay, never mind. Okay. There are plenty of infertile wives. Uh, restraint would take me some time to get to. Core physicians cost less to hire, which isn't terrible. I need to replace my core physician, which reminds me... My core physician. Alright. Well, we do have this guy. We have our dwarf. Who will be our court physician, it looks like. Dito's a badass, man. Look at this guy. He's genius and everything. Did you have any children? Did any of them get genius? Whoa! Unless you did. I'm badass, I'm a genius. Nephew and vassal. Or knight. Really didn't do much for you, though, did it? Let me do find character real quick. Physicians. Alda. She's pretty good. She got that 20 learning though, you know? You know, let's make her my wife. Physician. Physician. Count Joffrey. Okay. I think the... Mark, that's as, intend as intended. I kind of like... Thematically, I like him being my physician. So I think I'll make him my physician. Um, he also has really good learning and everything. 
The other one could make a good physician too. But I don't I think I have to invite her to my court. Let me see. Straight position. Yeah, I have to invite to court. And that's not gonna happen. Okay, so yeah, we'll make him the physician. Just like that. Sure, Kath, give me one sec. These are my titles. Ephraim and Bob, what's up? All right, new lifestyle perk. And when I'm married, my wife's dead. How is this known for your dedication to your faith? Perfect. All right, guys, hit that like button. We're about to do our giveaway here in the next 15 minutes. Um, just so you know how our giveaways work, you, I'm going to be pressing a button, and it will open up a thing, and you'll, you'll take care of it through there. But in order for the giveaway to work, you have to be subscribed to the channel because the bot will only choose people that are subscribed. It's how we prevent people from just jumping in and getting the, the, uh, the code uh, without actually being a member or anything like that. That way we don't give it to another bot. Um, so that should be your top priority if you want to win Crusader Kings 3. Yeah, we're going to get a wife for stats alone. Uh, we, I think maybe restraint. Restraint would allow us to get any wife we want. But it'll take us some time to get there. Increased development in county efficiency by 20%. Let's get that 300 mark, guys. Go ahead and slap that like button. Get those, turn it blue, as they say. Let's get up to 300 likes. Well, let's do this, and we'll try and move towards restraint. Remember, if you do want to enter into the giveaway, you will need to be subscribed to the channel. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate it, man. What? I do? No, no. We only have zero. I didn't have anatomical studies. Jackman? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't even need to watch them if you don't want to, man. Let's do this real quick. I'm sorry, I keep getting sidetracked by looking over at the chat. Let's let's do this by sum of all skills. She doesn't have a huge problem with me. I lose a lot of renown though. Chance of children, none. Kinda like that though. She's got a lot of learning, which is going to help out with our... Whoa, that's a different situation than it was before. Oh, did I have... The, was I looking at that? I think I was. I don't want to, like, marry the Crypt Keeper over here. 
she's actually got a good spread. Marshall, stewardship, and learning. That's pretty solid. She's 57, so she's not much 10 years older than me. Fuck. 13, 14, 24. It's not bad. And she also is genius, so if I do have any good kids, they have the chance of being at least geniuses. Stinky pup. You are stinky pup. It's a good girl. It is a good girl. So, all right, guys. Do I go with a, well, let me, let's... So, it's between... So, Dor Dorotya here has got a lot of really good skills. Or, we go with her right here. Ermintrude. There is a risk that with Dorotya, I will have children. I don't necessarily want kids, though. But at least this route, she's younger. And if I have kids, they have a chance to be genius. So... And yeah, she's 37, so she's got like eight more years. Um, my opinion probably, though, is to go with this lovely lass, as it will there it's guaranteed not to mess up my succession at all. It's not an, it's not a it's not an alliance with Hungary, Kyle. She is just Hungarian. Yeah, there's... She's just Hungarian, that's all. You just push into me? You just push into me. You 80 pound lummox. Oh my god. She does this thing where she just like pushes her head back into me. Head back into me. What was that? What's that? Okay. Thanks. Oh. I always give her some love. She's a golden retriever. If you guys have never owned a golden retriever, they love attention. Like this. Now you got the sensual hand cam.
Okay. I think we should just go here. They can be well behaved. They need good um Oh man, I'm sorry, Rebel Rabbit. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, I've got roommates P PSXXX. Okay, so let's do this here. Sorry guys. Um I think we should go the safe route. I mean, I'm 47. I, I, there's no... I mean, I could probably last a lot longer, and I could definitely get a wife and have more kids. The problem with those kids are that I feel like it's going to create a huge issue issue with my um, partition laws if I have more sons. And I bet you, just by the fucking power of, of the gods, she's going to pump out nothing but male children for me. And I'm just going to have a huge situation on my hands. I'm going to be sinking a ton of renown into disinheriting children and maybe bringing them back in the, in the long run. I don't know. So I feel like this is the safest and best bet. It's going to cost me some prestige, but I think it's worth it. And she's pretty solid, too. Really great stats. Oh, she's even a miracle worker. She's shrewd, which is great. She'd make for a good uh, teacher. It is done. Finally fucking unpause the game. I feel like we've like barely progressed. Yes indeed. Okay. I will make you my friend. Let me look at everyone in my court. Anyone pissed off at me right now? Not necessarily, no. Session. Change the... Oh, uh, I want her to help me out. Patronage. Yes, please. This brings this up to two more years. And then we discover hereditary rule and we can move to a partition lock. For the love of fucking God. There is, Angela, but... Yeah, Roiku, we're, we're definitely going to. We, as soon as we get Hereditary Rule, we can actually start moving towards Heraldry. Heraldry will probably take a lot, though. It's gonna be in nine years, Arch Saddles. All right, guys, 10 more minutes, and we'll be doing the giveaway. If you do want to enter into the giveaway, you will have to be subscribed to the channel, or else I will not be able to do it for you. So we're helping out County of Agrigento, which is good. All six years down here? That's brutal. Well, might as well do it. I'll switch to our saddle after this. Armored horse, because I wanted armored horsemen. And I was surprised that the Normans didn't have that innovation to start with. I was like, that's kind of stupid. We'll definitely do that after, though. Revelation. Touchy there. Okay, we're all good here. Council, you are doing control. Two more years left on this. Okay, now let's have you develop another county. Seven years, two years. There's Syracuse there. Messina. 16 months. Five months in Calabria. 21 days. Let me look at overall, too. We got to 300 likes. We got to 300 likes. Rap horn, rap horn. Not rap horn, but rap horn. 21, 21, 19, 13, 13, 17, 17, 17, 14, 12, 15. Th okay, so yeah, we'll do that. Do, do Syracuse. No, I don't have a this is Sparta thing. Novice position. Good, Anakin. Good. We'll probably do another. The hell are you? Ah, down here, huh?
We'll probably do another giveaway on the on the first stream for the Castile campaign. Duke Jordan gained 10 opinion you. Dude, my spouse is already crushing it. Let's go ahead and uh, make her happy, though. Zero percent. Seduce, fifteen percent. Way, fifty-six percent chance. Jesus Christ. A friend, one percent chance. Um, let's actually, uh, um, let's do this. Actually, a vassal's doing good, I suppose. Is this the last Nor uh, Norman neck? I kind of don't want it to be. I really want to start. So I'm getting a, a, a cool costume I'm going to be streaming with when I play Crusader Kings. And I kind of want to keep playing the Norman campaign, though. Educate a child. Roger de Oakville. What? Tyrion had a kid finally. And what's that kid? Fucking hunchback. We'll have her educate the hunchback. Got a lot of learning and she can do some stuff. What stat do you take in mind when learning, when educating children? I look at the learning and what also their um, education traits. <laughs> uh, I have Fred. I I've given him the ability to do so though. But I kind of like want to come back here and keep playing this campaign. I'm liking it so much. Prince Pandolf, what do you want? I mean, Duke Jordan's kind of a machine, Pandy. Do 41 until we get to a holy order. I want that holy order. That's why we have so much damn faith. So this, how many years? 42 years since the game has started. I feel like I accidentally had bread. Ask money from the Pope. I can't expand out. Ooh. I will be able to very soon, though. Let's save this before I just press 5 and go crazy here. Dude, Athens is getting pretty gnarly. Why we not accept? <sighs> Damn it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now
save. So we are going to start the giveaway. Yeah, I already wealthy leveled push was 15. He's greedy. Ah, motherfucker's greedy. Only need two. You see? Only need two. We order and we need 200. I, I need like exactly this amount of gold. Well, I need more less than this. Can, how about I ask for less gold and he gives it to me? All right, so I'm going to open up the giveaway. Remember, guys, if you are not subscribed to the channel, the bot will not select you as we press the button to push the, the giveaway all the way through to completion. So the way this giveaway works is I'm going to press a button. The bot is going to tell you to type in exclamation point, whatever it says. You will type that in and it will enter you into the giveaway. This is for a key of Crusader Kings 3. In order to receive the key, you have to have Discord. So, if you want the key and you want all that action, have your Discord up and ready. It makes the process a lot faster, so I don't have to, to worry about you, uh, hearing from you and everything like that. And do not close your stream chat because I need to ask you questions in stream after you've won. So, the giveaway is now open. Remember, you have to be subscribed, so do so. subscribe now if you have not done that. You have five minutes. After five minutes, it will shut, the, the giveaway will stop. And if you did not make it in by that point, I am going to continue on. Send him a gift of gold. Well, I, how much gift of gold do I give him though? Yeah, I don't have thirty. I don't have three seventy-five to give him. Um, we'll save this though, real quick, and I'll decide if I want to jump back onto this with the. And we maybe we'll do the Castile the beginning of the weekend next week. Um, but for some people were asking about Abyssinia, so I'll load up my Abyssinia campaign real quick, and you can see that while we're waiting for this to go. Absolutely, Cat Leo. Glad you're enjoying them, man. What the hell am I doing over here? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go attack that army. So, in this campaign, Abyssinia... So Abyssinia is really unique. Um, when you do Abyssinia, you start with a single swath of land, and you are a king already, so that's pretty beneficial. But what the crazy thing about Abyssinia is, you have... A number of Catholic feudal kingdoms around you, actually. Like here, we've got Petty King of Demont. Uh, this is not, not, not. Where's the other one? There's another one, another major one. Oh, they're up here. Yeah, there's other Coptic kingdoms that are up here that you can ally with and kind of add to your uh, to your overall power base, which is really cool. But the big problem, though, with it is. Um, Uh, the big issue with Abyssinia is that you deal with a lot of feudal kingdoms. Uh, I'm sorry, a lot of tribal kingdoms around you. So, take a look at this. Here's a high chiefdom. Well, this is feudal, isn't it? Yeah, this is feudal. What have I done? No, this is a 1066 start. Um, like, for instance, the County of Hike, I've taken, but it's tribal. So I have to convert it. And to convert it costs a lot of money, actually. Uh, constructing your vassals holding. So, replace building. Oh, I think he's doing the right... I think he's taking care of it right now. Oh, wrong button. Press this, then that. No? There was a button right here that says convert holding to feudal to uh, um, feudal, and it's actually pretty difficult. So it costs like 500 gold or something like that to do it. But it basically kind of forces you to pick and choose who you fight with, and since you're surrounded by so many tribal people, you then have to deal with them raiding you, which is going to happen a lot. So when you deal with that, you just pretty much have to smash against them really hard. Um, for instance, my vassal over here expanded his territory on his own. I was pretty surprised at that. Um, 
But yeah, they're attacking the chiefdom of uh, Quata. And it's going pretty hog wild. But Abyssinia, like, I already... You can vassalize people without war. And what you have to do is you have to hold a title above them and be more powerful than them. Then you can basically offer or force vassalization. Um, let me show here. I think I might have a save of it. I save a lot before critical things to understand how stuff goes. Might be around here. Yeah, the tribal vassals take a long time to convert. Which is, yeah, okay, cool. So check this out. Let's see. Okay, this guy goes up here. It'll push him out of there. Titles can be created. Didn't create a title. What did I do? It was late last night. It was really late last night. I can't remember what I did. Can't hike to someone. Yes, give me money. Ah, okay, yeah, so... I, you, did you see what just happened? Here, I'll reload this and show you. What I had done was, I sent an, uh, an offer to Shoah to vassalize. And I, I can't to the petty kingdom. Uh, so I already sent this guy an offer I wish I could show you like a button to press to say, oh, what offers did you send him? So watch this, watch on the map. As this progresses forward, it'll it'll kick in. Wait for a little bit further. Okay. And watch Shoah. Watch it right here. Boom. So I I offered vassalization to him he accepted and i took out that i took that land without any issue um right there where it says you should grant hike to someone can you explain that quickly i do i have heard that quite a bit kyle almost every day <laughs> grant hike to someone so i can grant this to someone because right now it's part of my holdings and they will manage it and grow it themselves. So um, I can feudalize this tribe, which costs me 500 gold, and that makes Hike a castle holding. Um, right now, I can't do anything in this location because everything is tribal. So um, I would press grant to and then select someone from this list to grant it to. Um, they become your vassal, though. So if it's, say, a court physician, you lose that court physician. He now becomes a vassal. So I wouldn't choose anyone um, unless they had a good stewardship skill. Like, who is this guy? I mean, he'd probably be a pretty solid... Um, oh, he's already a vassal. I would probably give it... Why is he... Interesting. from the county of hike grant him this then he becomes my vassal and he's got a really great steward skill so he'll be able to really boost this place up pretty well uh, it depends on what you want carlo um, i find that i like feudal more than tribal tribal is kind of difficult because progressing from tribal to feudal is a pain in the ass okay so let's do the sitch Alright, so this is done. Tribal's fun though, yeah, because I don't have to worry about um, my wars. You just go attack anyone you want. Too sober for this. Absolutely, man. I'm, gl I'm glad you're enjoying it. In the wise words of Colonel Sanders, I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. Let's take a look over here at the giveaway. Let's press this button. Remember, 
if you've entered into the giveaway and you're not subscribed, the bot is not going to select you. I'm going to let you guys know up ahead. Um, there was someone that spammed a shit ton of times to try and get into the giveaway. If you win it, I'm not going to give it to you. Just as a heads up. Let me look. I'm seeing you guys are all subscribing now. <laughs> uh, rating does become an issue, though, as you progress further into the, the timeline when people have larger forts and bigger things, so it's harder to kind of break into. Let's go ahead and pick a winner. It is Shadow Khan. You've just won. No, there are definitely bots, though, there. I, can... I looked at the thing, and you can definitely see them. That's why I have you guys subscribe, because if you're not subscribed, it won't select you. Mr. Fonzo, welcome aboard, brother. Welcome to the channel, my man. And I'll probably be doing another giveaway uh, when we start the Castile campaign. Um, there's a good chance that I will... I'll probably continue this campaign. I really enjoy it. Like... I really enjoy playing this ruler. I really enjoy being Sicilian and Norman. I, it's a really cool historical point in history, too. Um, I have tons of stuff to talk about, though, with Castile and El Cid and talking about the Reconquista and all the stuff over here historically for the Iberian Peninsula. So um, we might wait until next Saturday to start Castile. And we'll just play the Normans for another two or three campaigns. Um, my big goal was to kind of take over uh, uh, Greece. <laughs> but uh, ShadowCon, go ahead and message me on Discord so I can give you your key, my dude. Let me roll some credits and give some thank yous out. Jesus Christ, it's 2.15. Yeah, it's eleven. It's eleven oh nine A.D. when you get a single crusade. Eric the bastard. Let's go ahead and save. We've saved this plenty of times. We're gonna do it again. Um, now we'll go exit game, main menu. We'll go back to new game. And we'll go to any ruler in ten sixty six. Uh, ShadowCon, though, please message me on Discord, my dude. Need you to shoot me a diddy do. So, who am I looking at? Eric the Who? This guy? Eric the Bastard over in Sweden. Him? North part of Sweden, or is he like? Or are you saying like he's actually like a like a count or something? Oh, he's a vassal. Okay, this guy, Prince Eric, the heathen of Sweden, <laughs> the heathen of Sweden. <laughs> I do, Rainmar. Um, that's why I, you have to keep up the. He's making one right now. God damn. Um, the heathen of Sweden is pretty, that's pretty cool. I like that. Heathen of Sweden is pretty cool. That's a very interesting play. Astaru. How do I pronounce Astaru? 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 His is the dynasty of Bjorn Ironside that got deposed.
Hey, you know, Carlo, I have not actually played a lot of uh, 800 at all, actually. That's the true. But let me give out some thank yous though to the people that donated here today. We did get some donations. So throughout the whole day, we got five dollars from Aerodom, six fifty one from Mark Platten, five ninety two from Pierre of Monte Cristo, five ninety two from Crisps, and then five dollars from Garland Green. Thank you guys all very much for your donations, especially Big Daddy Crisps, who is the consummate. Uh, moderator of the stream. Hmm, Rust Pit, interesting. I, as soon as they make a DLC for Kievan Roos, I will play Kievan Roos immediately. You can play as Alfred of Wessex. I wish I could press a button and switch between the two bookmarks. So I gotta go back, go to the main menu, new game, 867, play as anyone. Bjorn Ironside himself. Dude, I'm so excited for Last Kingdoms next up next season. <laughs> yeah, Alfred is not the king of Wessex yet. How do I message in Discord? Okay, ShadowCon. Uh, yeah, listen to Border Collie and he'll help you out. Yeah, I mean, I have not really touched any of this. I have not played a single campaign up here. But if you want, you guys want to see some... I, I've got a video I'm going to be doing here this week. And I've got all my notes right here. So what are some good 867 ones? So Great Moravia. brain doesn't work. Ah, right there. So I'm like, it's, I know it's a big one. Where is it? So this is a really fun one. That's a good one. You have uh, Abyssinia. You can do... You could do this in 867. I think that the 1066 is a, is a, a better start. Um, Rust Pit, I believe it's just the first expansion, and you get an additional set of clothes, from what I understand. Um, what is the other side of it? Oh, 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 this one's good. Pratihara, because you can become the Lord of the Ganges, and take a look at the development here, man. Everything here is just top-notch. Oh, why is it showing me? Development. Well, here, I'll, I gotta press play. Now it'll show me the development. It's 18, 18, 18, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24. This isn't as great. But a lot of this land, like all the way up here, 18, 18, 18. And if you do this on 1066, it's even better. This whole area is like light orangish yellow. Um, do I have any more? No, that's all my... Now for... The other portion of the video I'm doing on 1066, we're just we're waiting for for ShadowCon. So for those of you just hanging out, here's some other ones we're gonna I, I'm gonna recommend Great Liao, which is basically what leads to the Mongol Empire. And if you if I press play here, take a look at the decision. Become greatest of cons. And you become the Mongol Empire, and you had a Mongol invasion cast this belly, which is really sick. 
Um, switch character. Uh, Minja, uh, Jinja. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. The the reason I like this guy is because he needs a spouse. He's 22, and he starts with intelligent. So it's a pretty solid start to start off with. You don't have anything directly to your north that can actually attack you or your east. So you really only have two borders to worry about. Well, you have multiple borders because multiple things border you. But um, you don't have as many natural enemies, which is cool. Another one I had on mind is just south of here. Zinyama. Oh, it's Yarling. She also starts with... Uh, she... She starts with Handsome, which is kind of nice too. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with that. No, not not with those characters ever game. As far as other 1066 I've got in this map. We already talked about Western Gia, which is this. So remember what I was saying, this location over here? How its development is through the roof. Look at it in 1066. It's way better now. You can go pretty crazy with that. Um, Castile. I, I think Castile is a really cool starting location. And one of my other ones I'm going to be putting on here is this guy. And I think it's cool because he is the last member of the Carlings left on the map. Oh, Fermandois, there it is. Herbert of Vermandois. Play. And he's like the last Carling. Which is just kind of cool. You can just kind of trace that lineage back. So, I'll be doing that video here in, in the next couple days. It's like, like seven cool starts that you can kind of look at. You want to see Malta? I can do Malta for you. There's no way to do it under a one person terrific life. You'd have to, you'd have to get rid of all of the uh, succession. No, I know where to. I... Yeah. Malta is down here. Here, uh, but um, sorry, I I've, I kept getting it confused with Amalfi. Malta is you can start as this guy if you so wish. But yeah, you have to you have to disinherit everyone to get access to just one heir. There's no, like, trick of titles. It just is getting rid of everyone. Yeah, or one son. Respite's right. Let me see here. We're still waiting here, man. Where where you at? Where you at, Shao Kahn? That crisps, that's exactly why I was gonna recommend that. Discord name. Alrighty. So we're just getting the quick confirmation for ShadowCon and we'll be shutting things down here. But yeah, that's why I think that this is a particularly cool um, start. It, it's really difficult though. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do that make it really hard on you. Playing a count or a duke as part of a larger liege 
tends to be a lot harder because you kind of have to do a lot more intrigue and subterfuge. And if you guys stayed around and Shadow Console has an issue with this, we might be uh, doing another, might be raffling off this key here. I swear it's not furious typing, it's just how I normally only type it. It's that 90s typing. Richard, that's awesome, man. Yeah, guys, if you do want to purchase the game, you can use my link if you want. Get a 12% discount, um, which is really nice. One thing that's cool about Abyssinia is that look at its part. Its starts as a uh, partition. So not even a confederate partition. Uh, this is a Corsair K-70. Stealth rapid fire. Is that what it's like to type in German? I don't even know German, man. So I think we might be giving this key away. So guys, like I said, you have to have Discord up and open. It, it makes this process easier. I have to confirm it's you, and if I can't confirm it's you, I cannot give you the key. And ShadowCon is having some difficulty here, and if it, if it persists, I'm going to have to kind of move on to someone else. No, I'm talking to him on, on Discord, but I don't know if it's actually ShadowCon, and that's the problem. Because the way this works is you're going to tell me what your Discord name is on stream chat. And the stream chat itself is being monitored by the bot that selects you, and it shows, you, it shows me only your IP address. Okay, there we go, there we go. Uh, Gots Fun B, I believe the difference is that the Royal Edition comes with the first DLC plus an extra set of clothes for the, in the game. Well, I can't see there. I can't see your IP, your IP, but. It's only tracking your IP. So if another guy on here comes on and says ShadowCon, it won't recognize him. It's only going to be attached to his IP. Monsieur Giscard, no problem, man. Uh, I don't know, man.
Okay. Oh, there it is. Whoo! We got it, guys. We got it. Oh man. I was about to I was about to slap the timer on it. All right, there it is. We got it. We are now shutting the stream down. Thank you everyone who showed up here today for having some fun. Um, I'll decide whether or not I'm going to be doing the Norman campaign for the next couple days on the channel. I've got a lot of videos planned. We're going to do a seven, a cool seven campaigns start that we're going to be probably pumping out on Tuesday. Um, a lot of you seem to want to know more about faith and piety, so we'll do about that. Um, I'm going to do a quick poll on the channel in the next hour or so. And I think we'll decide on whether we'll do, excuse me, faith and piety seem to be the one that people want to know the most about. Um, counselors and vassals is one people want to know about. We just did renown and dynasties and making money and control seem to be ones people really want to know about. Um, so let me know when you see that poll come up. People are going to vote on it, and it's just for the next one. I'm not going to not do the other ones. It's just to kind of plan out what I'm going to be pumping out. Um, but again, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. We'll be back this week with some more streams as soon as I get that fucking costume. I'm so excited to come tomorrow, the day after. But I will see you guys for some more Norman or the next Castile campaign, as well as some other CK3 videos. Um, I still do have another Bannerlord video I'm going to be pumping out here. And so hopefully some Total War Warhammer news in the coming days. Finally. <laughs> or weeks. They said no more this, uh, no, none this month. So maybe in the next 20, 30 days. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Please wash your hands. Stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one. So how do you redeem the key? You just put it into, uh, you put it into Steam. Whoa, Mark dropping a last minute, just sneaking it in there. $5 donation. Thank you very much, Mark. Oh yeah, we're almost, what are we, what are we at right now? What are we at right now? We're at 95,000 as of today. 5,000 more, got a whole big rebrand that we're going to be pushing out, so... No, I gotta get some food. I gotta get some food. But alright guys, we will be back here uh, in the next coming days. Everyone have a good one, take care, and stay safe out there.